call the City of Milton Common Council meeting to order Tuesday, September 5th at 7.01 p.m. And can we have confirmation of appropriate meeting notice? The agenda was posted at Dave's Ace Hardware, Piggly Wiggly, and City Hall. Item number two, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Hey Dave, we're uh, motioning to approve the agenda. Sorry about that. <laughs> was there a second too? I'm sorry, I was talking. There was. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We have an agenda. Item number three, public comments regarding items which can be affected by council action. Is there anybody that would like to sign? Nobody signed in? Okay. We do have a letter um, from uh, Mr. Jason Cowley in regards to item number seven, and I have passed that uh, letter out to everybody, and I know Linda also emailed it to everyone. Um, Mr. Cowley has submitted a letter um, in opposition to Quick Trip's request for a Class A license, um, and we certainly can discuss that more uh, when that item comes up. But I wanted to point out to everybody that that item has been, or that letter has been passed out uh, to everyone uh, in advance of that item. So, I also received a voicemail from Beverage Mart um, stating that they were opposed to um, the Quick Trip license, also. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, is there anything else under public comments before we go to item number four? Item number four, approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The consent agenda is approved. Item number five, discussion and possible action on a Milton and Milton Township Fire Department intergovernmental shared administration memorandum of understanding, which was um, discussed and voted on at the fire commission meeting. Um, does anybody want to talk on that further? I just had a concern or question and I received an answer to it. I just wanted to be sure that the 33% uh, number did not uh, dramatically change the bottom line numbers of our cost to operate. And uh, I've been assured that that is the case, that it's not going to dramatically change anything uh, in total cost to the city of Milton. So, uh, And that meeting was videotaped, correct? Yes. That is correct, yeah. So that um, the meeting that uh, the mayor is uh, referencing was last week, Tuesday evening, or was it Wednesday evening? I can't even remember. Tuesday. Tuesday evening in which the fire commission, the joint fire commission reviewed uh, the MOU that is attached they approved that MOU contingent upon the city council and the town board approving the MOU. And as Alder Lane <coughs> referred to in his comments, uh, he called me today to ask the question uh, in regards to the budget. And, and my answer uh, to him at, uh, was at this time, based on the information we've received, it's, it's ultimately a push or, or a, a net uh, zero increase with, you know, give or take some nominal dollars on either side of that. Uh, obviously, moving forward, uh, that you know that that won't always be the case. But uh, uh, the fire commission and city council and the town board would have to approve the fire commission agenda in the same way that it has for the last 60 plus years, uh, with with uh, uh, with the new chief, uh, Chief Randy Banker from Janesville, providing that budget uh, to the fire commission and then to the individual boards, uh, uh, as we've done in the past. So. I do have, if you'll bear with me, I do have one other question or comment. Um, I see that the any bonuses or pay increase for the chief would be initiated by the city of Mil of Janesville in that in that MOU. And my question is, will there be an opportunity for the city of Milton and the township of Milton? to have input to that uh, appraisal or that in merit increase? So. That's a, it's an excellent question. And, and I, I don't have an answer to that question. Um, 
in, in short, and, and this is going to be kind of an extrapolation of my interpretation of the shared services agreement, which was approved back in February. Um, Mr. Randy Banker, Chief Banker, is an employee of the City of Janesville and will be subject to the City of Janesville's merit increases uh, review process in the same way that any other employee at the City of Janesville would be. And, and to a certain degree, uh, Chief Banker would be considered, uh, for lack of a better term, and this is not in a legal sense, but a contract employee of the city or of the of the of the joint fire <coughs> department, um, similar in the in the way that Mr. Vogel is uh, an employee of Baxter and Woodman, but is a contract employee of the city of Milton. Um, and, and a similar question came up at the fire commission meeting last week Tuesday, and and the way I answered it at that time was. Any increases that Chief Banker receives from the City of Janesville would then have to be reflected. One, uh, one third of that would be reflected in the city in the in the Joint Fire Commission's budget. And at that time, uh, Mr. Banker would have to reconcile that with the overall budget in order for both entities to feel comfortable approving that budget. So, in the event, uh, in the highly unlikely event that he receives a fifty thousand dollar raise, for example, um, it is my understanding that that the, the city council and the town board wouldn't have any say as to whether he gets that raise or not, but the city council and the town board would have a say in how that's reflected in the overall fire department budget. Um, so it, it would be up to him and in, in those two bodies then to reconcile that difference. Um, if, his, if his salary increased to a point that had a, a dramatic effect on the overall budget, uh, in the town and the city who didn't feel comfortable with that, he'd have to reconcile that somewhere in the budget, either through some cost cuttings or revenue increases, or uh, in the highly unlikely event, uh, the town board and the city council could reject the budget and, and say, uh, go back to the drawing board and, and make some alterations in order to uh, stay within the means that uh, have been provided for you in the past. I think all of those scenarios are highly unlikely, uh, but uh, there, there is a check on that on that system through through the the independent board's uh, approval of the overall budget for that joint uh, fire fire department. And then worst case scenario is that there's a 90 day uh, resolution to drop the MOU. True. I mean that's true. That's so, right. That's the that's the. Is there any further questions or comments? I just want to say that I this is I'm very proud to be a part of the Fire Commission and a part of the Milton City Council at this point in time when we're taking this great step that we are. Um, I know that there are other municipalities throughout the state that have done fire districts. We are not doing a fire district. We still are keeping our own identity. And I think it's important for people to know that and um, always remember that these fire commission meetings are open to the public. If anybody would like to come and, and watch the meetings or participate, just please take the time to do so. Yeah, I want to say that the, um, you know, the transition team that was put together to assist the fire commission um, when we were looking at implementing the RW recommendations, um, worked tirelessly and long hours and um, worked through a lot of issues and they, they've actually been doing this for months. And um, the Fire Commission has been supportive uh, and given them the confidence to make these recommendations. Um, I feel very comfortable with the recommendations because they, you know, they're coming from our people that are out there fire, fighting fires and um, out in the ambulances, and those are the people that that know their know their jobs and know how to keep the community safe and provide the services that everybody needs and deserves. So, um, I'm excited for the future. And um, if anybody else has any questions or comments, go ahead. Dave, do you have any comments? Oh, I know you were. Uh,
is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the memorandum of understanding with the Milton and Milton Township Fire Department Intergovernmental Shared Agreement with the City of Janesville. There's a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item number six, discussion and action to approve new and renewed operator licenses. Uh, the city clerk's office has received uh, one renewal and 23 new operator license applications since the July 18th Common Council meeting. Uh, those names have been included in the packet. Uh, as a reminder, each one of these applications is subject to a background check performed by the Milton Police Department and further reviewed by the Municipal Court Clerk and City Clerk. Uh, and it is staff's recommendation that the council approve these new and renewal operator licenses. I move to approve the licenses. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Item number seven, discussion and possible action on Quick Trip Incorporated. Incorporate. Incorporate. Incorpor incorporations? I don't know. It's inks. Inks. Oh. Quick trip inks. <laughs> Been at a training all day. I can't speak anymore. Mm -hmm. Application for a Class A retailer's license. Intoxicating liquor for consumption away from the premises where sold. And you all have some, um, some documents that have been sent out. So, yes, Dave. With regard to this request, Section 14400 standards for issuance. And there's several items on there that this application does not meet. One is a proximity to other licensing or license establishments. It's barely two blocks from K. And the uh, demonstrative or positive economic impact for the city, I don't understand how that could ever be demonstrated. And based, you know, if you look at uh, Jason's letter about the uh, limited market, I believe that that is absolutely true. We have been operating in a city with two outlets for hard liquor for quite a few years now, and there hasn't been any demonstrated demand for another outlet. And I believe that that market is a little bit soft at both locations and to open another one now is just going to be detrimental to the two current licenses and wouldn't be any of any uh, great uh, profit uh, addition to the new uh, to the new request so I would have to say I'm not going to support it. Is there any other comments? I, I concur with uh, quite a bit of what uh, Alderman uh, um, Dave had to say. Um, the question I have that was on my mind and really sets with me a little bit is, um, and I don't know if we'll have the answer to this, but why wasn't this license requested when the establishment was started? Wasn't that long ago when Quick Trip came in? And I, I wondered why they didn't ask for the Class A liquor license at that time. That's just a comment, a thought from me. So. And, and I, I'll just make a general comment and then the council can um, carry on. Uh, two, two parts. One, just so everybody's clear, the quick trip that's in, uh, I guess three points. The quick trip that's in question, just so everybody's clear, is the east side quick trip location the one the newest quick trip out here in the industrial park right. so the request is not uh in, in has has nothing to do with the west side quick trip uh so that's the first point uh the second point is is the the quick trip that's requesting this license already has a class a fermented malt beverage license so they uh, they currently are selling uh beer 
um, and other fermented malt beverages. Uh, and and the, the, um, the third item is, is that uh, the representative from Quick Trip, Ashley, is out in the audience. So if folks have questions for her, she can um, do her best to answer those types of questions. Uh, I don't know if you'd be able to answer his question or not, but, but I just wanted to make everybody aware that if you do have questions, there is a representative from Quick Trip here that will do their best from, to answer it. So, From well, what I know, when we first were opening the... Can, oh. can, sorry. Just we we're recording it, oh, it's okay. and it, from back there, you probably wouldn't be picked up. So. No, you're fine. If you if you want to just state your name and. I'm Ashley. I'm the manager at the Quick Trip that's in question. From what I do know, they did ask for that when they did the Class A, um, because most new Quick Trips that size, they do get uh, wine in there. So from what I know, I was working in Oregon at the time though. So. <laughs> But that was what I was under the assumption when we were opening the store. They had inquired it, but at that time, there were too many of those licenses already out in the town. So, yeah, because usually they just do it all at once, too. So, And that is, and, and I can't speak to that, but that is a possibility. Uh, that was before before my time as well. Yeah. Uh, it was before most of our time up here. Mm -hmm. And and I, and I this, this ordinance has gone through so many iterations even since I've been here. There is, and, and maybe Mark can help us, was there previously a quota on Class A intoxicating license that has since been removed? I, I, can't, I can't even keep track in my own mind. Is, does that ring a bell? I can't remember. It's gone through so many iterations. So that might have been the reason that, that it, an application wasn't processed at that time, that there wasn't even one available to process for them? Yes, but, we added it one to accommodate. Mm -hmm. But Class A, isn't, isn't Class A determined by the state? N no, no. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and remember, there's... There's two different types of class A's. There's, Please review. There's the class there's the class A beer and wine, which they currently have, and then there's the class A uh, retailer's license for intoxicating liquor, which is what they're requesting. And I, we I don't, don't have wine. Oh, okay. Nope. Yeah, beer, we just have malted. Cider, yeah, we just have beer. malted beverages. What we usually sell when there's um, stores that do provide liquor, it's wine primarily. So. reason I brought it up is if it was part of the original business plan I just wondered why it didn't happen that's all I've mentioned yeah. and that's that's why there's the I mean if you've been in the store that's why there's that random at the end of the at the end of the registers there's that random just table that's there that was originally going to be that rack from what I remember hearing when we built the store so if you are primarily selling wine out of the stores that have this license, then why, why I not don't ask for <clears throat> just a beer wine instead of a liquor? Because I don't know if Quick Trip has changed since then, that they're getting liquor, liquor or not. The ones that I've been at, because um, I've only done grand openings in Iowa, they're the ones that I've seen that have the wine. Because um, other than that, I've only been working in Dane County, and they have just malt beverages too. Because a lot of those stores aren't big enough. So. And is there a quota? There isn't a no. quota. No. Yep. No, 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 no matter of uh, us as a body making a decision that's right for the city. Period. I would uh, have to agree that it is not a you know, positive uh, economic impact at this time, that um, you know, we need to look uh, at the city as a whole and what is currently serving them. And it's not anything uh, you know, against no. the trip or anything at all. Mm -hmm. We're very proud of the services that are currently being, being done by Quick Trip. It's been a, 
an honor to work with uh, you as well. But we also have an obligation to the other businesses that we're working with, and um, we don't want to impose upon them as well. So. I have, I don't know if anyone wants it, but I do have our tobacco and alcohol sales policy um, that states kind of our rules and our policies and our guidelines on how we have to ID anyone that looks 30 or younger. Um, so in the regards of the city and stuff, it isn't easy by any means to purchase at Quick Trip either. Um, so I've, I grew up in Milton, so yeah. <laughs> you know the hard time you had? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, no, I understand that part about the city and it, what's good for the city and current uh, places, so, but, yeah. And one of the things that I would just like to point out, which um, actually Jason did it very well in his, in his letter to us, is um, the, the other cities that are our size, um, Edgerton, Fort Atkinson, Evansville, they don't have the Class A intoxicated liquor. Um, um, for Rock County, we have to have separate entrances to the beer. Um, I don't know if Edgerton falls under that. I know Janesville does. That's why the Highway 51 store has that separate entrance for beer and liquor. Um, but Edgerton sells beer. Yeah, I don't... No, yeah, I know that. Um, like I said, with older stores, they weren't built to have them, in a sense. So that's why 605, or the other side of Milton will never have beer, um, because the way the stores were set up to begin with, too. Um, and Edgerton is a smaller setup as well. Um, Evansville, there's no quick trip. And then Fort Atkinson has beer, from what I know, too. So uh, the liquor part, I think, is a new thing that Quick Trip's been trying. It's not something that's been set for a while. Um, again, with Edgerton, it's an older store, too, so that's probably why as well. Yeah. <clears throat> it's been a newer, it's been shown in newer stores. It doesn't pop up much at old stores unless there's a high demand in the city for it. So, yeah. One, one comment that I uh, heard from a, from a constituent today that... Um, I forgot to share at the beginning was uh, their their thought was that they were fundamentally opposed to the idea of a gas station selling liquor. Um, they thought that a liquor store there's there's an implied understanding that when you are entering there, you are entering there for a purpose to purchase liquor. Mm -hmm. uh, when you enter the grocery store, there is a section dedicated specifically to liquor, whereas a gas station is kind of a serve all purpose. And they felt that there was just a fundamental uh, disconnect uh, that that um, that Milton should look to establish as kind of a uh, I guess a precedent or an unwritten precedent in the concept that uh, that liquor at a gas station there's a conflict there's a there's a there's just a conflict in that process. So I apologize I meant to share that earlier, but I wrote myself a note and didn't bring the note in here, but. That was the that was a, a comment that I got from a uh, from a citizen today. So. Well, I I have to agree with what everybody else has kind of said here. The compatibility, uh, the demonstrated positive economic impact for the city. I think for a city this size, we are pretty well set with alcohol. If anything, maybe we have a little too much alcohol for a city <laughs> this size. <laughs> um, and the um, compatibility of the proposed use with the neighborhood, I, I don't see that at all for that industrial area. Any other further questions or comments? Or does somebody want to make up? Uh, so, what's that, Dave? Dave, go ahead. I, I would make a motion we deny this application quick trip. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further questions or comments? Mark, do we need the council to state a rationale for denial in the motion, or is the discussion that precedes the motion sufficient to imply the rationale? 
Yes, thank you. I would say that it would be appropriate to just include in the motion uh, shorthand to say for the reasons stated in the, in the discussion of the okay. council, I, I would move to deny. Did you hear that, Dave? So, so you're going to have to amend the motion or vote it down and I see the three minute places so it's good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so it, if if I may unless Inga's got a better uh, a better handle on the motion the motion would be to deny the application um, as requested by Quick Trip for the reasons as stated in the discussion by the common council. <coughs> Excuse me. I think you said that rather well. Second Some, agrees. Okay. Um, Inga, do you want to read the motion back, please? So, Alderman Adams' motion to deny Quick Trip Inc.'s application for a Class A retailer's license intoxicating liquor for consumption away from the premises where sold for the reasons stated in the discussion of the council. An alder person Clark seconded. Is there any further questions or comments? Okay, so all those in favor of denying the application? All, the, all those opposed? The motion carries and the application is denied. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, all right. Item number eight, discussion of possible action regarding wage adjustments for crossing guards. Um, as I put in the memo, we, we did see an increase in the crossing guard wages the last budget year. I don't have the memo in front of me. I don't remember when we did that increase. But they also, um, our crossing guards also received a reduction in hours because of the um, the way the school calendar got restructured and it just ended up a reduction in hours, which really didn't mean an increase in wages for our crossing guards. Um, we got looking at our budget numbers, um, having difficulty recruiting crossing guards for open positions. Um, we discussed the fact that if we added a 25 cent increase to the crossing guard wages for this school year, that would bring them up to $12 an hour, uh, makes it a, an attractive number for me in my recruitment efforts. It also has a limited budget impact. The impact, um, the, the budget is split 50-50 with the school district, and so it's a total of a $600 impact that is split half and half, so it's a $300 impact to us at the city, which we would then split between our two budget years, so this, uh, our fiscal 17 and our fiscal 18. So it's really only about a $150 impact to our budget in each of those two years. Um, pretty minimal investment um, to help my efforts in getting additional crossing guards recruited. Um, the uh, uh, school district has also agreed to this approach and just need your approval tonight to make it happen. Why aren't we giving them more? We are splitting this cost and I'm just thinking that, yeah. I mean, it, it seems to be a it's it's historic that we are losing people as crossing guards so I mean why aren't we giving them more an hour than just the 25 cent raise why don't we go with 50 cents or I don't know if it's historic that we are losing crossing guards since I've been here I don't know if we've had anybody leave other than Louie um, and and from a from a peer community standpoint um, we're actually considerably higher than Janesville, and we're, we're exactly where Beloit's at. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think your point is well taken, and Scott, or Chief Markor, can certainly add on. Um, I think, uh, you know, we would love to, to give everybody more. Uh, this, was the, this was the conversation that we had with the school district. They were in agreement with it. Um, in, in the event that... Um, you know, we do start losing folks. Um, it's something that we can consider again. Uh, but uh, from from the time that I have been here, I, we've we've only lost one crossing guard, and that was for 
not wage related <laughs> purposes. <laughs> you know, so I just want to make sure that that, that point's um, understood. I, I don't know if you want to add to it. And, and I think anecdotally, it's the hours no, yeah. rather than the pay. It's the um, it's the fact that it's 45 minutes in the morning and 45 minutes in the afternoon, which fall typically within somebody somebody's normal work day. So it's difficult for someone who is working those hours to then do this just for 45 minutes twice a day. Um, so then we typically rely on people who aren't working those hours, which, you know, cause with some of our, our staff, we have uh, um, one night shift worker who does it and does a fantastic job with it. We have some retirees who don't have day jobs and that works really well, but both of those are a pretty narrow pool to draw from. And so I, I, I think our, our struggle in getting um, what we've had difficulty filling is a part-time position. We used to have a part-time position that somebody could just fill in if somebody was sick, unable to be there. Um, for whatever reason, we had a fill-in person working part-time that could then fill in those gaps. That became even more difficult to find a person that's just willing to do, oh, can you just do this 45 minutes in some random day sometime this month? We aren't really sure it's when it's gonna be, but we'll call you. Um, to have somebody commit to that was difficult. So we, were, we have not been able to fill that part-time position. With this full-time position that we have opening up, we have some applications, and um, I'm kind of hoping that it gets filled. And um, we're, gonna, we're gonna work through that. But I think the difficulty has been, you know, the limited number of hours or you know this isn't like a 20 hour a week job this is you know about a six and a half or so or seven and a half hour a week job um, and so it, it's it's a certain kind of person that we need to attract to that I move that we approve the 25 cent wage adjustment for the crossing guard. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further comments or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item number nine, discussion and possible action on contract with landscape architect to develop master landscape plan for Story Gardens. Exciting. Yes, I am going to ask though that this be postponed until the next meeting. We're still working on getting a proposal from at least one other landscape architect to just to compare pricing and make sure that we're making the best choice for the, the community with this project. So I'll make a motion that we table this item for the next meeting. I will second that. There's a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item number 10, discussion and possible action on Ice Age Trail community application and use of park funds for the application fee. So this summer we had um, our city hall intern, Jessica, work on putting together the Ice Age Trail community application along with a, an application committee that was established by the Parks and Recreation Commission and the finished product is included in the packet. And the Parks and Recreation Commission recommended using $2,500 from the park fund in order to cover the one-time application fee. And is there any renewal fee? No, this is just one-time application fee. I will make the motion that we approve the, um, sorry, I covered up my page that we approve the application for the Ice Age Trail community and that we approve taking the funds from the Park and Rec Committee. I'll second it. There's a motion and a second. Any questions or comments about this? I'd just like to make a comment. I, I think it's gonna be a great thing for the community. Uh, there's a lot of potential uh, opportunities that are gonna come out of this. Uh, for improvement in activity in the community, business development, things like that. So. Yeah, and looking at some of the other towns that are already involved, it looked pretty cool. 
And I want to thank the Parks and Rec Committee for taking this up. I went to, maybe you don't know this, a couple of meetings <laughs> and <laughs> encouraged them to contact the city and to talk about this and to see if this is something that maybe we would be interested in participating in. And it's not like it's just like the simple five minute application. There are things that, um, steps that had to be taken. I'm really glad that we put forth the, the effort and I'm excited to continue with this. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item number 11, and we have been waiting for this. I even looked, I did look, check this out already. <laughs> so we're going to have our presentation on the new City of Milton website. It's the big reveal tonight. It is neat. So the, the website technically went live uh, this morning. And uh, so what we're going to do is Inga's going to bring it up on the big screen. And then uh, just going to give you some of the highlights of the new website. Uh, it is certainly has a very different look to it than our previous website. Uh, so when you go to our website now, um, this is what you will see. As you may previously recall, when you went to www.milton or ci.milton.wi.gov, you went to a portal page that gave you multiple uh, ways to get to the website. Now it will take you directly to this website. Uh, and, and what you're seeing on the big screen is what is live out there on the internet right now. <clears throat> uh, some of the highlights from, from this site, uh, a lot of the content, just to be clear, a lot of the content that's behind the main screen is the same that was previously on there. We've updated it, some of the stuff's been removed, some of it's been maybe spruced up or added to, but the vast majority of the content behind the main screen is the same in the sense that it's the, it's the same narrative that was previously in there but it'll have a much different feel. The idea behind this website is to make it more visually appealing, but also more user friendly. So you can see on the bottom of the screen, there's the five icons. Those five icons are what are the most frequently clicked on items from the previous website. So we did an analysis, uh, Civic Systems helped us with this to show where people were going. What On our old website that was up for four years, three years? Five. Five years. Uh, we, we could see where, where were people, when people were coming to our website, where were they going? And some of the most, the more frequently visited locations were those five items beneath there. So that makes it very quick and easy for people, hopefully, to not only uh, find that information, but to visualize it. Uh, as you can see, there's utility account requests, city ordinances, agenda, and minutes. Make a payment is something that we have expanded greatly in the city of Milton, uh, even since my time here. Uh, the ability to make online payments, so we want to be able to kind of highlight those big items. On the top of the screen, uh, the, the language that's up there in those drop-down menus <coughs> may look a little different than it previously was, but that's where the meat of the, or, or the vast majority of the information will be housed, is in those drop-down menus. Again, you know, living and visiting is a new way of saying what we previously said in the website, but it's more user-friendly, it's more understandable to folks who don't necessarily always use the government lingo or the government vernacular like we do. Uh, you know, one of the things that we discussed a lot with Civic Systems and as, as staff was, you know, when we say things like public works, that makes sense to us on staff, but that may not make sense to the average citizen. Well, what is public works? Is that, is that where my trash gets picked up? Is that, is that where the parks are? So we tried to use some of the vernacular, if you live in the city or you're visiting the city, here's the things that you want to click on. If you're interested in the government of the bill, uh, of the, you know, the, the actual, you know, bricks and mortar of, of the, uh, or the, or the actionable items, that's where those, those can be found. So your committees and your uh, uh, staff directories, city ordinances, things of that nature. So, you know, a lot of these are best practices that are used through civic systems who do websites who do governmental websites all across the country. One of them that we modeled ours after often, or at least we looked at most often, was Portland, Maine, just because it had a, a feel that I think we all on staff uh, felt made sense to us in an intuitive fashion. So that's, that's kind of the main screen, but not only uh, is that information available, but as you scroll down, and that's all it is, is a matter of scrolling down. It's not clicking or, or anything of that nature, just scrolling down, there's this, uh, kind of 
they had a word for it, and all I can think of is carousel. All I can think of is turnstile, but a carousel of city news. And this is updated on a very regular basis, 99% of the time. It's Inga who does it. But these are current events, things that we want to get the word out, things that our folks may have heard about, and then they come to the city's website to, to learn more information about. So there's you know things very recently, like the business climate survey that's out there, the water quality report, information about the property revaluation, our Tree City USA information, the Emerald Ash Borer. So these are things that are you know, probably on folks' top of mind, or at least they've heard about, either through the courier or attending a meeting or a committee meeting, uh, and they can go right to that and hopefully find, hopefully find some of that, that up-to-date city news right, right off the bat. If you scroll down, and if there's, if you want to view it all at the same time, there's one way so you don't have to cycle, cycle through the carousel. If you scroll down a little bit further, here's the city events. Uh, so this is a calendar that shows what are the upcoming events, and this is st specifically for the city. So committee meetings, elections, uh, important, uh, important issues that are happening with the city government. It'll show you where those events are. If you click on any one of those, it brings you right to the information uh, that is pertinent to that event. So I think Inga clicked on the Parks and Rec committee meeting that happened tonight. So you click on that, and it brings you right to the that committee page and the agenda for that evening. Um, so as you're scrolling through the website and you say, oh, there's a community development authority meeting on September 11th, well, what's that all about? What are they gonna be discussing? You click on that and it'll bring you right to the agenda. So again, it's, it's kind of taking out some of that guesswork of how do you navigate a cumbersome website such as a government website. We have so much information and we never know exactly what people are going to look for when they come to our website. So the whole goal of this revamp was, let's try to take some of the guesswork out of it, let's make it a little bit more intuitive, and let's bring people the information right up front so they don't have to search for it, that five years worth of data has shown that's what they're here for. So, you know, we can't always be everything to everybody, but what we have seen is these are the things that people are looking for when they come to our website, so let's make it easier for them. Um, and then obviously down at the very, very bottom, there's even more information, FAQs, uh, other helpful links that can navigate you in and inside the website or, or even potentially to external links like uh, the chamber and things like that, and, and then the contacting us. Uh, again, uh, you know, all the information that was previously on the website is on this website with a few exceptions of things that were outdated that had just been hanging out there. You know, and, th and that's another small piece of this, and I don't, um, you know, it's not, it's not the most important piece, but it's certainly something that we considered is the ability to easily change data for us is important because when you put so much data out there, uh, it's hard to keep track of when that information is stale or out of date or expired. So hopefully this, this, this new format of the website helps us stay on top of those things better. And then one last cool little thing is you can see this, the pictures on the website cycle through uh, and uh, we can change out those pictures very easily. Last, on the last website, it wasn't as easy to do. This is a lot easier, so we can change those based on the season. We can change those based on events. And then one of the cool things that we had them add was if people want to know where is this photo, if you see something that, you know, you've been a lifelong resident of Milton and you see a picture of something, um, you can click on it and it'll tell you right where it was. So, for example, the picture of Mary Allen's house, I said, where is that photo from? And you clicked on that and it shows you right where it's at. So, uh, where is this photo? Oh, down there. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm clicking on the photo and then your picture is stale. Your picture is stale? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> you said you wanted to know what was stale. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, your headshot? Yeah. Oh, so we have a request for new headshots for council members. I like new headshots. Please. Yes. I think the only department. I think the only department head is Howie's, and we made sure to keep that one out. What's that? Oh, oh, no, the only department head. Lisa. Oh, Lisa. I thought you said a Nisa. Oh, oh okay. All right. So, so that's that's kind of the, the quick tutorial of the website. Are there? Is there? Do folks have questions, or you want? It? Us to no, click I think on it anything? Looks terrific. I think you did a wonderful yeah. job. It, it really is. Looks excellent. I want to ask one question, and, and it may, may not be, make sense. Is there a potential of connecting to the when you go to the committee meeting? You know, you go back to and see, okay, the committee met on this day. Oh, okay. Yep. The minutes are in there, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Is there a potential to link right to that meeting? 
I know that it's in YouTube. Oh, oh, the so video. Oh, I'm just saying. I'm not trying to make more work. No, that's it's a good question. The YouTube link in the agenda center. Okay. Yeah, I just need to take the time to. So no, yeah, so through. so it would always be obviously retroactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. retroactive. Yeah. But I, I I just throw that out because I'm wondering if that. And we have continued to explore the possibility of, of streaming live as well. We're, we're continuing to look into that. Um, obviously, it's, things are never as easy as they are. But that's a, that's a good question, so we'll look at that. Sure. And the, 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 again, the, the website went live today, so Inga has, been, Inga has put a ton, a ton of work into this. Um, so she deserves a lot of kudos for yes. the amount of work. I, I know she was working on it on Monday night when we were all probably home sitting around a campfire. Inga was working on it. So um, we have to find ways for Inga to work less. But that's a whole other topic. But So she's put a bunch of work into it. But with that being said, we, we were looking at it today. And as some of the stuff started to go live, we noticed that there was some kind of goofy, kind of wonky stuff. So, so we're still seeing those. So if you guys are clicking around on it, um, and looking at it until 2 a.m. tonight, Linda. Uh, and you see something, just let us know, and we'll try to we'll try to have. Uh, I'll leave it on Angus' machine. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's it's. I think it's awesome. And and we had a, a group. It was Howie and I and Dan and Lisa and Scott and Inga and uh, myself uh, and, and and Leanne was a part of it as well for uh, and and Elena when she was here. So everybody's kind of uh, had had their kind of hands in it, but Inga's certainly the mastermind behind it. So, and uh, she runs a runs a tight ship. <laughs> nice. Good. The mobile site still needs a little bit of work. Just so folks know, if you go there and you say that boy, that doesn't look right, we are we had two phone calls and several voice messages and several emails today saying that needs to be fixed. <laughs> so we're still working on it. But the, the, this site's the way we envisioned it. There's still some pages I need to touch, but everything's more or less there. Yeah, I know. I need to go back and do that. That is just good. Yeah, thank you. Now all you have to do is update Twitter with the links. <laughs> So we'll schedule headshots for everybody. <laughs> Is that guy still around that took our pictures? I don't think so. Good. That was. No, I. But I've never seen him since. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's ever around. We should have. We should have hidden cookies on there to see who can find them. That's what we should have done. <laughs> Okay, item number 12, general items, committee reports. Who's going I, first? I have a general item. I was just wondering, um, we, we always get the information on the servers and histories. Now we have requirements for the, our alcohol servers and that, but we never really hear anything about anything going on in the taverns, and I'm just wondering if we could get, you know, if are all of our taverns in good shape? We don't ever have any fights or anything, or I mean, how, we just never hear anything. I wouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> so I was just wondering if we could somehow get reports on that. I would I would want to know more about. I would want such a report to be useful, so I would want to know. <coughs> more detail about what exactly that you're looking for. We can we can run reports in our record management system on the basis of an address and it will give us all the activity that happens at that address. Um, we could 
you know, we could narrow that down to just certain things that you're interested in. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd want to spend some time with you to figure out exactly what that will look like. It's, it, it's all public record, and it, it, it's certainly no secret, but I don't, I don't typically come to council and um, identify certain businesses and the problems that they may or may not be having. So I just, I would want to talk through that a little bit. But Chief, but you do look at that when it comes time Absolutely. to yeah. to renew, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's part of the process. That's part of the renewal process is, um, is checking through the police records. And, that, and, there, and there's processes built into ordinance and statute that have to do with um, if, if problems in a licensed premise are um, expanding beyond what we've been able to deal with, and they've been, most typically our, our licensees work really well with us, but if there's ever a circumstance where we're having problems with a licensee, we're having difficulty fixing that problem, then there are there are mechanisms in place and statute and an ordinance that it can bring that issue in front of this body to start talking about suspension or revocation of licenses. Thankfully, that's a rare thing. I mean, that's not something that that we use lightly, but it's it is available to us. Thank you. Any other general items? Committee reports, health updates, no. <laughs> Ryan's using all the Kleenex down by him. <laughs> What's contagious, who is it? <laughs> okay, you guys got committee reports. Okay. Um, gathering place. A uh, couple things. Uh, <clears throat> Dave's brought bash is this Friday, September 8th from 11 to 1. Five dollars per meal, and if you want meals delivered, you could call and order them, and uh, we'll deliver them to you. So let us know, uh, but call the gathering place. How soon can we call? Uh, anytime, no, oh, and get those ordered. We'll so um, you know, just let them know how many meals you would like and approximately what time. And we'll go from there. Um, uh, let's see. Then uh, just kind of get this on your calendar. Sunday, October 1st. Um, I don't know what time. 2 o'clock? I'm trying to think. Uh, anyway, it's the Gathering Place's 25th anniversary. And so there will be some festivities at that time. Mayor Welch has agreed to speak on behalf of the council and the city. Um, also, we, we will be setting a proclamation at the next meeting, I believe, um, to begin the uh, honor of working toward that event. And um, uh, trying to think what else. Uh, the uh, nephew of Marion, uh, Marion, the, the woman that uh, actually built the gathering place will be coming from, I believe he lives in Utah. Uh, he'll be flying in to be a part of that event too. So I think it, it's kind of a big deal and uh, lots that she did to put this all together and uh, to really believe that it, it really has sustained uh, its original purpose all these years. So, and last but not least, but I thought I'd mention it because it came up at our last board meeting, uh, just mentioning that, that, that the, the group is beginning to make plans now that the concerts in the park for this year have finished, they're starting to work on next year, and they're considering moving concerts in the park to the area outside of the, the gathering place. Um, they felt that uh, during the, the final uh, concert, it, because of the rainstorm, they had to move it to the, the basement of the gathering place and they found that that was kind of a big deal to move everyone to to this area and decided that maybe 
uh, since the city was no longer directly involved in it, that they might use the property to the west of the building that they that they own, and they might as well use it. Um, and then if it rained, they had a, a place for a rain date right next to that property. So um, they, they may begin making plans uh, for that property between now and then. Uh, and then last but not least, I wanted to make a mention uh, regarding public safety. We had talked about setting up a quarterly meeting for the public safety committee around this time soon after school started so that we could try to get a quarterly meeting involving a variety of people and try to get public uh, concern uh, or at least a, a offer them to bring in any concerns that they may have that we could discuss as a group and I wondered if we could try to get uh, an opportunity to set a date soon. I think that would be a good idea to give us some time to really promote it so we can get some more participation so we can get it out there on Facebook and repeatedly show it and get get the agenda out tweet it out talk about it go on the radio whatever we're gonna do right so if we could try to promote it for maybe October um, but I want to get going on it because if we wait and do it December we're gonna kiss everyone right. bye right Right. So, okay. that was it. And just so to clarify, that's that's separate from our regular public safety committee meeting. Well, I I think this was in lieu of that for a while to it. see okay. if this would work, and if it doesn't, then we'll go back to what we had. I, was that it? Yeah. Was and you, that would, your idea? The um, to include yeah. the um, sure. public works a public forum. We were we were going to try to do. So we're going to right. have quarterly meetings, we which we can alternate with the other, some of the other committees. So, but then we also talked about it as a separate item, what's happening in the public works. Right. So in public safety, and I think I was trying to remind you to get some public works in there as well, uh, to have a forum. That would be the right. separate right. thing to call for a meeting. As needed? Well, that would also, I think, was, yeah, I think it was as needed there. Right. But otherwise, we had our, we were talking about making the meeting itself uh, quarterly. Okay. Those are two separate things. And I think we okay. also right and it would be nice to maybe if we could get some feedback from the community like what would they like to see talked about or discussed or is there a certain presentation or something like so if we can get this started and we can get some feedback as to what they would like it to look like too I, I will tell you with October um, I was going to mention this later, but I might as well mention it now. The 17th, 18th, and 19th is our on-site reaccreditation, so that's going to be a difficult week for us, anyway. So if we can avoid that week, it would probably be a good thing. Do you want it after that, then, like right before trick or treating, so we can talk about Halloween yeah, safety? I think, maybe? I think after it, I'll be feeling really relaxed. So okay. <laughs> after okay. that week would be beneficial for me, probably. Uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th is when we'll have the accreditors on site. And a lot of times they plan a public meeting along with that for reaccreditation. They don't typically see a lot of people show up to that public meeting, but that is part of that process typically. It's the 18th at 5 p.m. And it's already scheduled? Yep. Right. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, Howie, how does that fit in with what Public Works does around that time of the year? Because won't we be discontinuing curbside pickup and stuff like that? Because I thought that we were trying to incorporate <coughs> several areas, like even Dan with the budget and Al with everything and Inga with everything. And no, we don't want a three-hour meeting. Yeah, those, <laughs> th those items, Linda, are all scheduled already through 2017. So, so it would be suggested changes for 2018, probably.
Okay, committee meeting reports. All right, besides having, finishing off a cold, I also have a bad sunburn I'm getting rid of, too. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thanks for Friday. <laughs> My time being outside all day Friday. Anyways, um, with the Historic Preservation Commission, we have a seminar coming up on Wednesday, September 27th at the Milton House. And it's called Dealing with Stubborn Vacancies Downtown. We're doing that in partnership with Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. And so we have a guest speaker coming in at... Uh, Around 12.30, I believe, is when things start off. Uh, 2 p.m. for the Sorry, seminar. 2 p.m. for the seminar. But again, the people who attending the seminar can take tours starting at 12.30. And then immediately following that is kind of a reception at the North Lee Winery as well. So I wanted to mention that. What's the date on The 27th of September. Is there something on the Milton House <coughs> website, or is there going to be like a Facebook event or something There's, that we can I have it on out? our website, and then I'm okay. going to put it on... Facebook again tomorrow. Perfect. Anything else? Um, yes, for the library, <coughs> I am very happy to report that this year's library lope, we had 83 people come and physically do the lope. Um, and I, I just, I have to tell you this because it's just so cool. We had a former Milton student who lives in Minnesota, who actually came back home to Milton to participate in this event. So it was just great. And I'm very sorry to say that we missed a photo op on that one. Um, but they raised a thousand dollars. And so that that's really, that's, that's what it's all about. The teenagers had a great time with it. And then I, Lisa is not here with us tonight, but she will be with us at the next meeting, and I know that she has a lot of things to talk about. There is another food truck rally for Sunday. This Sunday, this Sunday 10 to 2. For, yes, 10 to 2. So if you missed the last one. <laughs> and there was not too many that showed up, right? It was initially going to be canceled. So, so yeah. this one is going to have This is going to be a lot bigger than the last one. Thank you. Oh. Any other committee reports? Um, and then also for tourism, I just want to remind everyone that we are currently taking ads for our 2018 tourism booklet. And if anybody has a really neat picture of Milton, could you please send that off to Inga to add into the um, photo selections that the committee members are, are also going to be turning in? Um, but this is a pretty big deal for the city of Milton and we have utilized this all over the state so if you know of a business that should be in here be sure to get a hold of them anybody else anything um, just quick for Parks and Recreation Commission they are accepting artwork and slogans for a uh, pollinator promotion contest. So, <laughs> I love so <laughs> when do we get to have bees on site? <laughs> yes. So, so what what they're planning to do is they're trying to promote the protection of all pollinators. So your bees, your butterflies, monarchs, hummingbirds, all those types of different species. So we're looking for artwork and slogans that we could include on street signs that we plan to hang around the city to um, promote the protection of them. So the deadline is September 14th at noon, and then the commission's going to review all the submissions at their meeting on September 18th, and then the winning design will be revealed at the annual Prairie Seed Collection at Crossridge Park on October 21st. And will we send something out to, like, the, the schools? So yes. yes. Art classes and stuff. Yep. Great. Thank you. Anything else? <laughs> I'm so impatient. <laughs> I just wanted to remind everyone that um, the uh, fire commission is, you know, as of this memorandum of understanding, we will be welcoming a new chief, and we will be saying a great big thank you to Chief Lucas for all that he has done for us in the last couple of years. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, 
Staff reports. Howie, if you go first on staff reports, you don't have to go first on team building. <laughs> not, not, not a lot out of the ordinary going on. We do have some pavement bids going out. And that'll be at council in October. And otherwise, it's just it's pretty much just regular stuff. Leaf collection and that stuff starts in October. So. And they'll probably be flushing hydrants um, towards the middle of the month. And if you see, we may have to repair the water service at Railroad Park if you see us downtown. That's what that's about. So. Dan? Just getting going on the budget process and waiting for the state to pass their budget so we can get some actual numbers to work with. It's pretty difficult when I'm riddled with estimates. So <laughs> that's, that's where we're at with that. Along those lines, Dan has created a macro budget based on basically last year's numbers. So if we were to just assume everything stayed exactly the same, we would have to cut $25,000 from the budget. So that's that kind of gives you an indication as to where that this year is going to be a lot like it was last year as far as just the overall kind of picture. You know, we're hoping for better news from the state. We're hoping for increase in roadway aid. That's what the state has been trumpeting for a while. Uh, but we'll see if that comes to fruition. Um, we don't know about shared revenue. We don't have a final number on insurance yet, health insurance. So there's still a lot of variables out there. But if everything was to stay exactly the same, we'd have to cut 25000 So that kind of just gives you a... <coughs> that doesn't mean anything two months from now, but that just gives you an idea of where we're at with the process. Chief? Uh, proceeding with our uh, latest hiring process, we're down to five finalists who will be um, interviewing with me over about the next six days or so, and then the police commission meets next Wednesday to do their interviews and to certify our list, and then hopefully we'll make a pick from there. Um, overnight last night, we had five smash and grab car break-ins. Um, appears to be isolated to the kind of the northwest corner of town right in yeah right in that neck of the woods um, thankfully um, we didn't have more than that these are very difficult for us to detect that's why good crime prevention strategies are the best way to do it um, I, I do I'm very careful when I provide advice to people on what to do to prevent victimization because the ones who have already been victimized um, sometimes feel like I am blaming them for something that they did wrong. I want to make absolutely clear I'm not doing that. And the, the um, onus solely belongs to the suspects that we hope to catch at some point. So um, just be wary. Um, just put a Facebook post out about it as well. So try to get the word out. Uh, keep valuables out of your parked vehicles at night because people are looking and taking advantage when they can. I already mentioned our accreditation visit. Um, I think that's all I had for tonight. So did they like break the windows? That's what so the happened last were night. Locked. Yeah, we had five incidents of it. In all five incidents, there were things that were obviously of value that were um, sitting there, and so the suspects in these cases. It, I believe that the doors were probably locked because why would you take the risk of breaking the window um, if they weren't? So they were locked, but when you know when a wallet or a purse is laying out in a in a vehicle, that makes for a pretty quick target. It's just a matter of seconds to break a window and snatch that, and you're off in the darkness. So um, it's a very very quick crime of opportunity. Does it help to have like outside lights on? I mean, or it does it does it seem like that matters if they had like garage lights on, or that doesn't seem to prevent it I, I'm That's a fan for me personally. I mean so so that gets into a concept called crime prevention by environmental design and that is lighting is a great way to deter crime um, so is keeping shrubs and things like that trimmed down um, making sure there aren't easy hiding spaces within reason that are on your property where someone can hide out and wait to commit a crime. So all those things are good things. Whether it would prevent an individual crime like what happened last night, I'm not sure. Um, again, this was a very quick thing. 
they hit five places and were likely gone from the city after that. So um, I'm not sure a single light in a single place would do that. The other thing that can really help and, and that I constantly try to promote is um, there are people uh, perhaps in the community or in the region that know what happened last night and if they anonymously report that through Crime Stoppers and their tips program, um, we can certainly follow up leads on that way too. So. And is there an app that they can go to? I can't remember what it is. Yeah, that they can do it anonymously too? Yep, it's called P3. And the way the app works is you sign up for P3 and then you, you can make an anonymous report to Crime Stoppers and they can actually have a conversation with you through that app that there is literally no way to track where that information is coming from. Um, but people can report crimes anonymously through that P3 app and it's been working very, very well. Um, throughout the region on solving some pretty big things. Okay, thank you. Inga, anything? Not a lot tonight. <laughs> Al? A uh, couple things. Um, just a reminder, we have the groundbreaking for Diamond Assets on Thursday of this week at noon. I'm going to get some more details from the chamber as to where where they plan to be because Howie and I were out there last week, and it's a cornfield. Um, so uh, we'll have to figure out exactly where they want to be uh, and, and where they want us to be. And it's not like there's any parking <laughs> there either. Uh, so, so I'll get some more information for, for folks on that. Uh, in terms of public safety, just kind of a follow-up as well. We still plan to have a public hearing in regards to the Parkview Drive speed limit and the stop signs along Rogers Street that were brought to our attention uh, by Mr. Stinsky. We have uh, purchased the uh, traffic study device, if you want to call it that, uh, and we'll be implementing that next week. We wanted to get through the first week of school, so there's, uh, as people are kind of meandering, maybe where they wouldn't normally be, uh, on, our, on an average day, we, want, we didn't want to have that kind of spurious information in there, so we'll be starting that next week. So when we have that, that public hearing, which will be scheduled for October 3rd, we will have that information available at that time as well, so we can talk about traffic counts, traffic speed, and things of that nature. So uh, that'll be good information to have. Uh, additionally, on, at, on the, I kind of jumped ahead there a little bit, but on September 19th, we will also have two other public hearings in regards to zoning ordinance changes. Uh, and those are changes to the sign code and to the fence code. Uh, so we'll be having th those conversations on the 19th, kind of <coughs> kept the council up to date as to what those changes will be, uh, but kind of wanted to remind everybody that, that we'll, uh, we'll have, be having that discussion. And uh, I know the chamber is interested in the, in the sign portion of it as well, so they'll, they'll likely be weighing in on it. Um, Two other uh, smaller notes had a conversation today or this morning. Was it, gosh, I guess it was this morning uh, about a potential shared ride service coming to Milton. Um, so we, we just got some new information about it this morning. It's intriguing, but we still have a lot of questions. Uh, but we'll have uh, hopefully some information by the end of the week, next week, and then schedule some additional meetings and uh, like you to attend. Uh, so you can kind of hear that uh, it sounds like a pretty unique opportunity for us at a very low cost and would certainly replace the bus service that we lost a few years ago. Uh, but, you know, like I said, there's a lot of questions still to be to be answered uh, through that process and how it would work. But uh, it's intriguing nonetheless. Um, and I believe that is all I had. Did I miss anything, Inga? You reminded me about the public hearing. But. I don't think so. Is that one um, I attended the Lincoln Municipality's Chief Executive Officers Conference, and if you go to the, the league's website, you can, um, there's links to the videos of the presenters, and I would encourage you to kind of look through there and take some time to, um, to, to listen to some of the presentations. Um, we have workshops throughout the day, but we also have a like a little seminar where just smaller cities, CEOs, mayors, and um, village presidents meet, and then the bigger cities meet. So, of course, like really the major topic was transportation. <laughs> 
a lot of it um, was what everybody, you know, how are you fixing your roads? Um, that was that was one of the the biggest topics that we we talked about in our um, in our small cities and you know there's not very many um, municipalities that have solved that there was like one person that said yeah we don't have an issue and I, I wanted to find out where he's from <laughs> because I'm like how do you have enough money like what are, but he I, I think they just you know had a lot more property value or something because there wasn't anybody else in that room that that wasn't struggling with. Um, with roads so it was a great conference um, I learned a lot and um, I would encourage you know you guys have the there's another one coming up in October that I think um, a couple of council members are interested in you know it's really nice just to meet with other people who kind of understand you know your position and uh, the issues that you face and to get ideas and just to get support and, and, and um, exchange information so you know what other communities are doing and we're we're doing fine <laughs> better than some a little bit worse than others but we're, we're really doing pretty good um, so for team building ready it's not very difficult um, you know it's fall in Milton when fill in the blank <laughs> I know it's fall in Milton because this happened last week. Um, it's it's still warm enough where our windows can be open, and on Friday night we can hear the football game at Anderson Field being announced at our house. So it's always strange that you can hear it that far away, and it's not annoying or anything, but it's just that's always a kind of a cool, cool thing. So yeah. <laughs> I know it's fall in Milton when I'm walking my dogs and I have to wear my jacket. <laughs> Good job, crossing guards, earning their pay. <laughs> Ryan? I know it's fall Milton when Hawks opens up. Hawks watch it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chief? More regional, but um, yeah, when Skelly starts selling apple cider donuts. So. Dave? When Dan. I can sleep with my windows open. When I have to put a coat on my daughter. <laughs> Down to two. Howie. Uh, let's see. Um, I get asked about leaf collection the first day of September, and the public works employees all get that glazed over, it's hunting season look on their faces. So. <laughs> Mark? It's a challenge since I don't live here. <laughs> um, I guess I know it's fall when I don't get any more questions about the splash pad. <laughs> even know we've got questions about this much. Still open. <laughs> um, I know it's fall in Mil Milton when I'm at the last minute trying to get all my brush out to the curb at the last, you know, and how he's like, you got till this weekend. <laughs> all right, anything else? Okay, next meeting, September 19th, 2017 at 7 p.m. and we also have plan commission that night is that correct yeah we'll have plan commission at four o'clock that evening um, so those who are on plan commission if you aren't able to attend please let me know even though there's only one of you here <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there all right is there a motion to adjourn so moved okay. there's a motion and a second all those in favor Aye.
Close post. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody.